What's up, everybody? Hutch here, and this is your module 13-5, Congruence and Transformations. And we're also going to take care of similarity and transformations all in one lesson. So let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, when we're doing transformations, remember transformations is the umbrella term for all movements. Uh, the transformations preserve the shape and size of a figure. Um, which ones uh, fit the shape preserve the shape and the size, okay? Uh, well, we know that translating, translations, okay, slides, okay? The shape doesn't change, nor does the size, okay? We have reflections. Here's our FL for flip. Uh, and then our third one, rotations. The shape and size are still the same for all three of those. Uh, the one that does not preserve, we know, is dilations. So just writing that to cross it out, okay? Uh, all right, when we do more than one move, um, we call this a sequence of transformations, okay? Uh, so there's our three... Uh, types that we've used other than dilations as well. So translation, reflection, rotation. Uh, remember that you can uh, rotate okay, around uh, the center of uh, the shape. You could run, rotate around the origin. Uh, you could also rotate around a point uh, on the shape. Okay, uh, so just be aware of things like that as well. All right, so the first part we're just going to identify are the two figures congruent. Remember, congruent means equal to each other uh, in size uh, and shape, same side length, same angles. Uh, so let's go ahead and determine congruence. Uh, if so, we need to describe the sequence of transformations that map out the figure uh, from the pre-image to the final. If not, explain why they're not congruent. So let's zoom in and take a look at this one. Uh, we can see a prime and a double prime. So we're going from here to here, down to here, okay? So step one is, are they congruent? Well, I mean, if we look at some of the straight sides, we have one, two, three, a size of four, and a size of three. Is that still accurate down here? Yeah, it is. So we already know that um, they're proportional to each other. Uh, they are the same size, they're congruent. So uh, congruent, yes. So let's go ahead and write congruent, okay? Uh, and then let's go ahead and demonstrate how we got to that final image, okay? Uh, so what did we do, okay? Uh, step one, okay? Uh, you can see the y-axis here, okay? So what do you think we did to get from here to here? If you said reflected, so reflection across, what did we go across? Y axis, okay? After we did that, how do you think we got down to here, okay? Uh, so this is where we are trying to think about those things that we've done before, okay? So if I go like this and copy and paste the image, Okay. I need to be brainstorming stuff like this. If I rotate and move down, did that uh, rotate to there? Yes, it did. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Uh, that was me just exploring. So step two, uh, we rotated. So we had a rotation. Okay, What direction, clockwise or counterclockwise? So clockwise. And how many degrees? 90 degrees. So those are our two moves that we made, okay? Uh, and now we can go ahead and shift on to the next one, okay? Um, are they congruent? I mean, you can clearly see those are the same size. We have a two by three, a two and a three. Uh, so yes, they are congruent, okay? So congruent, yes. Uh, and now we need to prove what happened. So the cool thing with transformations is I bet you could explore a couple different ways to do this, right? Uh, maybe uh, we uh, go ahead and 
uh, move up this way. Maybe we reflect this way first, then move up. There's a couple ways of doing it. Uh, so really, whatever you want. One thing I notice, I'm looking and I see there's one, two spaces here, and there's one, two spaces here to get to the other point. So I could see that we could do a reflection, okay, crossing over there. Uh, so option one, okay, let's say that we could have a reflection across with axis. We're crossing over the y-axis, okay y-axis and then what do we do next so let's actually go ahead and show our reflection okay so here's where we are so far i'm going to go ahead and uh, maybe i'll use black here so we're here this one's one two three four five six away so one two three four five one, two, three, four, five. Maybe it's five away. One, two, three, four. Yep, five away. Sorry, I miscounted there. So I have here. The other one's five away. So here's our shape so far. Okay. Uh, and then now we need to move it up. So how far am I going to move this up? One, two, three, four units up. Okay. Uh, so we're going to say translated. So that's our SL with our slide, okay? And we can say up four units, okay? Um, and that would be represented as a mapping like this, Y plus four, okay? Uh, so there's that one. Um, or we could go ahead and translate up first and then reflect. So you have a couple ways of doing it, okay? All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this. Okay, um, so do some analysis here. This small base is one, uh, this base is two, this one's three. Okay, so right away we can tell uh, that these are not congruent. Okay, so we're done with that. Let's move on to here. Okay, um, so looking, are these the same shape? Okay, so let's see if they're exactly the same. Uh, let's see, I have a base here of two two, three, here's my two, here's my two, here's my three. So they actually are the same shape, okay, same size. So the question is, how did I move it up there? Okay, so let's start exploring some things, okay? Uh, so let's see, okay? Um, first of all, we can see A and B, okay? And it tells us we're going from figure A to B. Okay, um, so A is our pre-image uh, and B is our new image, okay? Um, so how are we getting there? You know, could we move it over and then somehow do some rotation? Uh, could we go down here and then do some sort of rotation? You have to sort of explore your possibilities, okay? Uh, so we can sort of just test some things out. Okay, so let's see what some different rotations do. Okay, uh, if we take this, oops, sorry. Okay, we can copy, we can paste image, and this is going to allow us to explore a little bit. So this would work to translate over. Okay, we could translate down. So you can see we're just like playing, playing around with things. Once I translate down, if I rotate counterclockwise, this isn't going to match. So that didn't work that way, okay? So maybe I want to try a different way. Maybe I want to translate to the right and do a slide, okay? And then if I rotate clockwise, let's see, do we create that image? Yep, we do, okay? And it ends up uh, down here, though, okay? So we have to explore this just a little bit. Maybe I translated too far, when we translated the first time, okay? Uh, because I can see that point. So maybe we just wanna go to there, okay? And if we do this, okay, we gotta figure out where does this rotation work, uh, where it rotates the way that we would expect, okay? So we gotta sort of play around with that a little bit, okay? So let's go ahead and do, uh, I guess first, maybe we figure out the rotation part Okay, so if I put this right here, okay, 
uh, maybe we figure out uh, how it moved okay, um, from that point. So let's slide this over and let's go ahead and actually like undo rotate this. Okay, so I'm going to copy, we'll paste the image. Let's go ahead and explore this a little bit. So if I rotate counterclockwise up like this and then move it up, we can see where that would go. Okay, so that helps us with knowing where we want to translate to so that then we can actually move it back down where we want. Okay, uh, so let me go ahead and I'm going to get rid of this for a second. Okay, so step one is we're going to translate it over to here. Okay, so one, two, three, one, two, three, up two, over two, connect. Okay, all right, so this is a translate. How far did I translate? Well, just pick a point, right? We went one, two, three, over four. Okay, so step one, we trans had a translation. And SL means slide. Okay, and how many units to the right did we go? One, two, three, four units right. Okay, let's put what the mapping would be. Okay, so we moved along the x axis, so this one would be x plus four, and y stays the same. Okay, so we translate. And then we do a rotation, and we already tested that out, right? So next is rotation. Uh, and what direction we went? We went to the right, 90 degrees, or one spot. Okay, so rotation clockwise, 90 degrees. Okay, so there's our movements for all that. I can go ahead and delete this now, and we can go ahead and make sure we say yes, congruent check okay all right let's check this one out uh, obviously not the same shape uh, we could call this an l right and we could just say not an l okay so pretty easy to say not congruent okay all right let's go ahead and shift down to the next section here uh, and explore this some okay so same type of thing okay um, are they congruent? Yes. This one's saying, already telling us that it is congruent, so we don't even have to test that. We just have to determine how we got there, okay? Um, so obviously, I can't translate this way. They're, it looks like they're flipped somehow. So it was either a big rotation, okay, um, or uh, we did some reflections and flipping and things like that. So let's investigate and try some things out. So this is two away, okay? So if I went two away on the other side, that would put B here, okay? This is three away, so if I went three away, one, two, three, that puts A here, and then C is three away. So if I go three away here, one, two, three, it puts C here, okay? So I end up with this shape. Let me lock this in a little bit, okay? So we end up with this shape right here, okay? Um, and that looks like it lines up pretty well. It's just too high, right? So I think at this point we can see what's going on here. So number one, what are we doing? We have a translation. Okay, what did we do with our translation? Did we move on the x-axis or the y-axis? We moved to the right, okay, on the x-axis. Um, how far do we move? One, two, three, four. So translation four units right. How would we represent that? Well, we took our x and we went four positive. The y didn't change. We didn't go up or down any, okay? All right, step two. Oh, and that wasn't a translation, I'm sorry. Uh, we did not translate. <laughs> we actually uh, did a reflection, right? Uh, so let's go ahead and we can maybe save some of this information and tweak it a little bit here to save some time. So we re had a reflection across, okay, what did we cross? We crossed this, and what is this? This is the y-axis, OK? 
Okay, then what do we want to do? We're going to move down one, two. Okay, so translation four units. We're just tweaking this a little bit. Okay, okay, so translation two units down uh, and x. We didn't move right or left, so comma. Y, what did we do? We went down two, so minus two. So there's our sort of like mapping for that, okay? All right, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this one here, okay? They're telling us it is congruent, okay? So which sequence of transformations? How do you think we got there, okay? So again, a couple things. Uh, could you go up first and then do something to the right? Uh, yeah, could we go something to the right and then up somehow? Uh, so we have a couple options. Um, is it a rotation? Those are harder to visualize. Okay. Um, so let's just explore some other things. I think I want to explore just moving this to the right. Okay. So one of the ways to do that, remember, is to go ahead and lasso this, copy it, paste, and actually like see what that looks like. If we move this to the right here like that, oh, look at that. It almost looks like a mirror from the top one. So we should be able to reflect that up. Uh, and send it right up to the top, which is cool, okay? Uh, so I don't think, yeah, it doesn't allow us to flip it. That would be cool. Uh, so that gives us a good hint of what's going on here. So let's send this to the right, okay? Uh, we want the N to be in this uh, Z spot here, okay? So we're going to send it one, two, three, four, five to the right, okay? Um, so K is going five to the right, one, two, three, four, five. L is going five to the right, one, two, three, four, five. And M is going to the right, one, two, three, four, five, okay? So here's our translated movement here, okay? So step one, what do we do? A translation five units right uh, what would the mapping be well we moved on the x-axis plus five and the y did not move up and down at all okay uh, and then how do we get up well I think we're gonna do a reflection right we're gonna send them uh, up across the what across this line, which is the x-axis, okay? So we'll do a reflection across the x-axis, and that'll put us right where we need to be, okay? So there's our two uh, steps there, okay? All right, let's go ahead and shift down here. Um, there's this logo for diamond plumbing. Um, they're just asking you, what did they do? What was the sequence of transformations to get from this original D, okay, down to the P, okay? So just think about some options. You can try something out. Pause if you want, okay? Uh, so first thing, are they the same? Are they congruent, okay? And they appear to be con equal, okay? So congruent, yes. Uh, so it allows us to determine the sequence of transformations. So let's go ahead and look. I think I would probably, from this center point, okay, uh, I might rotate all the way around to get the P to be this shape, okay? Uh, and so if you think about a rotation like that, if I just take, I'm going to try to, like, get it so it will rotate the center like this, okay? So copy, paste image, and you can see, look, if I just rotate it, that's 90, there's 180. So there's a rotation, but it's still not in the same location. So how am I going to get it down there? Translation to the right, translation down, and look how that lines up. Okay, so now we can go ahead and record that information. Okay, so from this center point, we're going to do a rotation. 180 degrees. Really, we could do counterclockwise or clockwise. Uh, my drawing, though, goes counterclockwise. So I'm just going to say counterclockwise rotation uh, 180 degrees. Okay. Uh, and then what are we going to do next? Well, we need to have a translation 
or translation, like I'm writing, translate. Okay, uh, so let's do a translation uh, to the right. Okay, we don't know an amount, so we're just saying to the right and down. Okay, and that's how we'll end up with the P. Okay, all right. Let's take a look at our next section, which is similarity in transformations. Um, one of the things I want you to be aware of, image, you can wipe that out. Uh, remember that in a dilation, the scale factor is the ratio of the side lengths of the image to the side lengths of the pre-image. Okay? Uh, and so we also talked about um, scale factor being image divided by pre-image. Okay? Uh, or scale factor is just the multiplier, okay? And if the multiplier is true for both side lengths, okay, from one to the other, then you know that uh, it is proportional and it has similarity, okay? Uh, if it's not a pr proportional, then it's not a similar uh, shape, okay? So something like this, okay, uh, you can see that our post or our uh, new image is out here, and our pre image is, um, or our image prime. Uh, so, sorry, hold on. Pre image is the blue, and new image is the green. Okay, so we're going from blue to green. So, draw your little arrow. Okay, um, and are we getting bigger or smaller? Since we're getting smaller, okay, uh, that means that our scale factor. Okay, must be less than 1, right? So it's going to be a scale factor of 0.5 or something like that. Um, now, it does have to be bigger than 0, okay? Something between 0 and 1, okay? Uh, all right, when we have the same, okay, and we have our A, D, B, and C over top of our A primes, uh, we know that we have no change, a scale factor of 1, Okay, uh, so when it changes, we would say that it's not congruent, but it is similar. Okay, um, the angles are the same and the sides are proportional, even though they're not equal. Okay, um, now this, we would say it's similar and it's completely equal to each other or congruent. Okay, um, this one here, obviously not congruent, uh, but it is similar, okay? Uh, we're going from the pre-image and we're enlarging. So for enlarging, remember we have to be greater than one, okay, of a scale factor. And you can see the little reminder hints there, okay? So let's head down here and apply this a little bit. Uh, it says determine if the pre-image and image are similar, okay? If they're similar, then describe the sequence that got you from one to the other. Uh, if not, just explain why they're not similar. So let's first analyze if they're similar or not, okay? Uh, so we have five units to 10 units, okay? So five times what? We're saying from DEF to GHI. Uh, so what's the multiplier? Well, we're saying the scale factor, okay? equals 2, because 5 times 2 equals 10. Uh, but we need to verify that everything's proportional. So this is 3 units, okay? And the bottom of from GI to I is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units, okay? Remember, we're counting the spaces. Uh, and so 3 times 2 is 6. So yes, they're proportional, okay? So that instantly means that they are similar, we know they're not congruent because they're not the same size, but they are similar. Um, now let's go ahead and identify um, how we got from one to the other. Okay, So we need to explore this a little bit. Let me erase my uh, marks there. So somehow we have to get to that larger shape. Okay, uh, We know the scale factor is doubled. Okay, So let's first go ahead and double um, our shape. Okay, uh, to figure out how we can get it over there. Okay, because there's no way to just take this, double it, and all of a sudden it appears way over there. Okay, um, if we're going from the origin, we know that if we have this distance, doubled will be two of those. So it should come out to there, and then maybe we can move it around. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and figure out 
where the uh, new ordered pairs are going to be uh, for this one. Okay, uh, so let's explore that a little bit. Okay, so the mapping for this one we know is we would go from x, y to 2x, 2y, and that's going to create our new shape, okay, uh, from the origin. So let's go ahead and do that uh, from the origin and see what we get, okay? So d originally, okay, uh, was 1, 2, okay, and the new d prime would then be 2, 4, Okay, so we go over two, up four, one, two, three, four. Okay, and so the, here's our d prime. Okay, uh, or in this case, our enlargement, we're almost shifting to this like g in a way. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and mark mark this as d prime though for right now. All right, let's do our f. F goes two or one, two, three, four over and up two. So four two that would change to doubling that, 8, 4, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, so that puts our F prime there, then we just need to figure out where um, the E would be, um, we knew this distance 1, 2, 3 was 4, so obviously that distance is now 8, right, everything's doubling, uh, so we could just count up 8, Okay, so spacing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It's going to go all the way up to that peak. And here we go. So that's another way of doing that once you uh, understand what your scale factor is. Okay, all right, so there's that. Okay, uh, connecting these, and there we go. So there is our um, scaled image. Okay, uh, with a scale factor of 2, with E prime here. And then we need to get it over to the green, right? Okay, uh, so step 1 is to do a dilation. Okay, so dilation uh, with a scale factor of 2. Okay, uh, and so we use this mapping of x, y to 2x, 2y, okay? So what's step two then? How do you get it from that black to the green? So go ahead and pause and do that and then see how you do. All right, so I'm exploring this too. How do, do I get to the green? Well, I wanna get this over to here and then down to there. So that's gonna be my translation move. So we're gonna do a translation of how many units to the right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven to the right, one, two, three down. Okay, so we're going to do x plus seven, y minus three. So translation, uh, and all we have to do is we can actually say translation x plus seven, y minus three, and it'll move it where we need it to go. Okay. Uh, so if we we're going to do the mapping, we could say x, y goes to x plus 7, comma, y minus 3. And there we go. That's how we get it there. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at these two here. Okay. So step one is to figure out if they are similar. Like, are they proportional? Uh, so let's explore this a little bit. We have 3 here, and we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 here. So according to that, we should be doing uh, a multiplier of 2, right? Um, so let's see. That means that this to this also has to be a multiplier of 2 uh, for them to be proportional. So we need to grab our calculator, and we need to test that out. We can say 5.8 uh, times 2 to test out if it works, or we could do the division to check. I'm just gonna do times two, and five point, if I actually type it right, that would help. 5.8 times two puts us at 11.6. So our multiplier is accurate, okay? Um, another way to check that um, is we can set up the proportion like this. We could just say three over six is equal to 5.8 
over 11.6. If you do the division, 3 divided by 6 is 0.5, and the 5.8 divided by 11.6 should also be 0.5. So 0 0.5 equals 0 0.5, so they are proportional. Okay, uh, So right away, we can mark that these are similar. Okay, Since they're similar, now we can figure out how did we get them to this new location. Okay, um, So the first thing I'm wondering is, uh, can I... Obviously, we need to reflect over the y-axis at some point, right? Because we got to get this over to there, okay? Um, so if I reflect, let's sort of think about uh, what's going to happen here, okay? Uh, so if we do a reflection, t is 2 away, so that means it would end up with 2 away here. And everything would reflect over. Uh, U is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 from there. So U would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 from here as well. So here's my just reflected shape, okay, if we reflect over. Okay, so that looks good so far. Um, the next thing I want to take note of is uh, obviously we need to enlarge it. How much do we want to enlarge it by? Okay, uh, so... We had a distance of 5 here. What's the uh, length of this uh, leg of our bigger triangle? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's 10. Uh, so that really tells us uh, it looks like we could enlarge by a scale factor of 2 uh, from the origin, which will also take it from 2 to 4 away from the origin. So that looks like it might work. Let's start to record down our moves here. So step 1... Okay, is a reflection across which axis? Y axis. And step two is we're going to do a dilation with a scale factor of how much? Two. Okay. Uh, and so how's that going to work? Well, we would take any of our XYs and we're going to create mapping of 2x and 2y. And that's going to go ahead and double our uh, shape to what you see. Okay, um, And just to test, um, this spot here is ordered pair 2, 0. Okay? Uh, so if I do that, 2 times 2 is 4. It should put us at 4. And 0 times 2 is 0. Should put us at 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Yep, it does. Uh, so it looks like that's all playing out. Okay, so just checking my work there. All right, so there we go with that one. Uh, let's take a look at uh, this one here. Okay, uh, so the first thing that we want to do is identify, are these similar? So are they proportional? So we have a 3 on this side. We have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Notice I'm always swooping a 5 on this side. I have a 1, 2, 3, 4 on this side. I have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 on this side. Um, so we're wondering, 3 times what gets me to 4, okay? Uh, so what's my scale factor, okay? So, or we can also look at it as 4 divided by 3, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and just check uh, the scale factor. We're going... Uh, actually from WXYZ to RSPQ. Okay, so we're going down technically. Uh, so as far as checking, it doesn't really matter either way. They just need to be proportional. Uh, so let's go ahead and just check the 3 and the 4 together. Okay, um, do the same order to check proportionality. So I went 3 to 4. I went blue to green. So let's do blue to green uh, with the 5 and the 7, so 5 sevenths, and let's check if they're proportional. So 3 divided by 4, we already know is 0. 0.75, and 5 divided by 7 is 0. 0.71 uh, approximately. Either way, those are not equal to each other, so these shapes are not proportional, which means they are not similar. Okay. So there's no way to create that other shape because we're not dealing with proportional shapes. Okay, So you can't dilate and create the other one. All right, let's take a look at these ones here. Okay, uh, Let's 
see if they're proportional first. So we have a three here, we have one, two, three, four, we have a five here. Uh, we need to find the same sides. So let's see, my smallest is here with two. So these match each other, okay? Uh, so I could do two thirds. Okay, I need to find the other matching to five here, okay? Uh, so you just gotta be careful. Here's my diagonal directly across from the diagonal. So we're talking this way. One, two, three is four. Okay. And we did 2 over 3, so I'm going to do 4 over 5. Okay, uh, So let's check for proportionality. 2 thirds is 0 0.6 repeating. If 4 fifths is that as well, it's not. We already know that. Uh, 0 0.8, so not equal. So these are not similar. Okay, So we can't create the other shape uh, because they're not similar. All right. Uh, last one here, uh, it says that triangle ABC is similar, so we don't have to test that. We do have to determine the sequence in which we got there. Uh, we're going to go from, and we need the transformation maps or the mapping, uh, ABC to XYZ. Okay? Uh, so first thing we need to realize is we're going small to big. Okay, So we definitely have a dilation. Okay. Uh, we could dilate this now first, uh, or maybe we think that there has to be a rotation and then we dilate. Uh, so there's a couple options to think about, right? So we could use our lasso and brainstorm some different options. Okay, so I could paste image. I could look at some rotations. So 90, 180, okay, uh, and put this here. So it actually looks like maybe I could do a rotation first um, and then it looks like this is one away from center, and doubled would put it two away from center and double the size. So we have that option we could do. Uh, it looks like we could also um, do some, do our dilations first, maybe, okay, and make it the correct size and then rotate it. So I think we have a couple options we could try here, okay? Um, why don't we just see what happens if we dilate it? first, uh, and then uh, we can go ahead and do the rotation, okay? Uh, so let's dilate uh, and look at our side lengths. So we have a 2 and a 2. We have 1, 2, 3. We have a 4 and a 4. Um, so what's the scale factor from blue to green? Well, 4 divided by 2, or 2 times what equals 4? We already know the scale factor equals 2, okay? Uh, so to do the dilation... Okay, our mapping would start with xy, and how would we dilate this? We would do 2x and 2y. Okay, uh, So let's go ahead and dilate uh, the uh, ordered pairs. Um, so we have ordered pair, uh, we could do c first, is negative 1, uh, and then positive 1, which is going to change to negative 2, comma, 2. That's, let's go ahead and at that point, once we know where C is, we can sort of just take care of everything else uh, because we understand how scale factor works. So I'm going to pick a different color here. Let's go ahead and put C prime where it belongs, which is negative 2, 1, 2, and up to 1, 2. So C is here. Since I'm enlarging the whole thing double, or by 2, I just know instead of a length of 2, I'm going to have a length of 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, so there's my B prime, okay? Uh, and then up, instead of 2, I know I'm going to have 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So here's my A prime. So you can see that's a little easier to do it that way, too. And then this is going to go straight down to here, okay? Uh, so there's my uh, dilation, okay? We enlarge the shape. Let's go and see now if that rotates how we want, okay? So I'm going to rotate 90, into this quadrant, okay? And then we're gonna rotate 180 into this quadrant. And we can see that lines up perfectly for us. So now I can go ahead and uh, I'm just going to actually undo, 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 and undo, okay? So let's, now that we've tested that out, we know that step one is to do a dilation, 
okay, with a scale factor of 2, okay, uh, and our mapping is xy goes to 2x, 2y. Step 2 is to do a rotation. Uh, let's see how many degrees uh, and what direction. So clockwise, 180 degrees. Okay, And there we go. We could even show something like that to show the rotation. Okay, uh, And then just be aware, too, we're doing around the origin. That's important to note so that we realize we're rotating around that uh, origin point. Okay, All right, so there we go with that. Let's scroll down here. Uh, these are last two, and that's it for this entire unit uh, or module, and you're all set. Okay, uh, So these ones here, here's a photo down below. Um, the person is going to increase this by a scale factor of 2 for the web page. Okay, um, And then he enlarges the web page itself by another scale factor of 1.5 to print. Um, this original photo, so let's go ahead and record this, Okay, is 2 inches by 3 inches. Okay, it says, what are the dimensions of the final printed photo? Okay, um, So first, remember, we're enlarging by a scale factor of 2. Okay, um, So all of our lengths and widths are just doubling, right? Okay, so... Um, our enlarged photo uh, ends up being, uh, let's see what, we end up with double, so 4 inches by 6 inches, okay? So there's our enlarged photo, is a 4 by 6. Uh, then we take that and we enlarge the whole web page another 1.5, okay? Uh, so what would the web page enlargement be? Uh, well, if we're enlarging everything 1.5, that means we're multiplying by 1.5 and multiplying by 1.5, right? Okay. Uh, so if we do that, 4 times 1.5 uh, gets us 6 inches, uh, and 6 times 1.5 puts us at uh, 9 inches. Okay, And so there's our newest uh, photo size. Okay, uh, We know it also asks us, are they similar to the original? Okay, uh, Yes. They are similar. How do we know? Because they are proportional, okay? Because we use scale factor, right? All right, so here's one for you to pause and try, and then that's it for today. Uh, it says a designer enlarges an image with a length of 6 centimeters and a width of 9 centimeters. So the first thing I would do is... Uh, draw some sort of rectangle here. We have 6 cm and we have 9 cm. Drawing a picture is a great strategy for problem solving. Uh, we're going to increase this by a scale factor of 3. Okay, uh, So that's important information to be aware of. Okay, So what would that new image look like? Uh, and then he decides the image is too large and reduces it by a scale factor of 0.5. And then they're asking you, will the final image fit into a rectangular space that has an area of 121 square centimeters? Explain your answer. So go ahead and pause and try this out. Uh, and then you can unpause and I'll walk through it and you can see how you did. Okay. All right. So there's step one. Uh, step two is the scale factor of three, right? So we're going to multiply everything by three and we should get our new image. Okay. This new image is now going to be 18 centimeters by 27 centimeters, okay? Uh, now that we have this, they said, oh, that's too big. Let's reduce it by a scale factor of 0.5. So we're gonna multiply by 0 0.5, multiply by 0 0.5, okay? Uh, and what do we get? Well, 18 split in half puts it at nine centimeters. 27 split in half, if we do 27 times 0.5, Okay, is 13 and a half. 
Okay, so now we have our final image, and the question is, will this image uh, fit into a rectangular space that has an area of 121 square centimeters? Well, let's just figure out what this area is to determine if it would fit, okay? So we know area equals length times width, okay? Uh, and so for this one, area equals 9 times 13.5. What is that? 9 times 13.5 is, oh, area equals 121.5 centimeters squared. Don't forget your label there. Okay, so will it fit into an 121 square centimeter area? Okay, no, comma, it will not fit because... The area is 121.5 centimeters squared, okay? And there we go. That's it, okay? All right, nice job. Let me know if you have any questions.